Jonah chapter 1 verses 1 to 3. The Lord gave this message to Jonah. Get up and go to Nineveh, the great city. Announce my judgment against it, because I have seen how wicked the people are. But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa and found a ship leaving to Tarshish. He bought a ticket and went on board, hoping to escape from the Lord. We all go through stormy seasons in our lives, right? No one, none of us are immune to these storms. And if we study the Bible, we can see there are different types of storms. Storms of different intensity and different types. And if we study the Bible and look into these storms, and when we find the reasons and the purpose of the purposes of these storms, then only we can know how to tackle them or how to overcome those situations. So that's what we that's what we will be doing today. So let's get into the first type of storm. This type of storm comes when we are against the will of God, when we are walking against the will of God. Let's look at the example of the story of Jonah, the verse that we just heard. We can see that Jonah got clear instructions from God about what he has to do. The Lord told him to go to Nineveh, but he didn't obey God. See, Jonah was not an ordinary person. He was a prophet. He knew God and he knew God's character. But still, Jonah disobeyed. If you turn to chapter 4, verses 2 and 3, we can see the reason behind Jonah's disobedience. So let's look at Jonah chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. So he complained to the Lord about it. Didn't I say before I left home that you would do this, Lord? That is why I ra ran away to Tarshish. I know you are a merciful and compassionate God, slow to get anger and filled with unfailing love. You are eager to turn back from destroying people. Just kill me now, Lord. I'd rather die than, alive, than be alive if what I pre predicted will not happen. So if you look at closely what Jonah was saying, we can see that he was more concerned about his image, his reputation, than doing what God asked him to do. These were the things that were more important to him. See, he knew that God would show mercy, that God would relent from uh, bringing disaster to Nineveh if they repent. And Jonah, knowing this, thought if the people repent, then his words would not come to pass. He thought if he, he, if he go and do this, then he would look like a fool because what he said did not come to pass. And when he feared that he is losing his reputation and the value of his word, he thought, I'll disobey. And he ran away from God. Now let us look into our own lives. Are we all also doing these things? When God asks us to do something that we are not comfortable, the first thing we would do is look at how it would impact our lives, how it would impact our selfish goals, how people would, th uh, what people would think about us, the reactions of our peers, our social circles, etc. And when we think about all this, we'll be like, oh God, if I do what you say, see, I, this would happen. I would lose this. My friends would think I'm weird. Uh, my family would reject me. My uh, relatives would say that I've gone crazy. I lose my status. I'll uh, lose my social standing. And when we think of all this, we'll be like, will decide to disobey God. But the problem is, when we disobey God, then we cannot stand in His presence. So, we would run away. So, Jonah ran. But the love of God always chases us down. Even though we don't value our relationship with God, God values His relationship with us. So, He would not let us go that easily. So Jonah ran and God sent a powerful storm. We look at chapter 1 verses 4 and 5. But the Lord hurled a powerful wind over the sea, causing a violent storm that threatened to break the ship apart. Fearing for their lives, the desperate sailors shouted to, to their gods for help and threw the cargo overboard to lighten the ship. 
But all this time, Jonah was sound asleep in the hold. See what happens here? The storm came and everyone else was panicking, trying to do something or the other to save themselves from the situation. But all this time, Jonah was actually sleeping. He was actually the reason behind the storm, but he was sleeping as if he did not care. Similarly, in the initial phases of storms, we'd also think that, okay, this storm will pass, or this would not affect me, or these losses are not very big. We'll just simply let it pass. We don't care. But see that these problems or these storms does not, did not affect Jonah alone, but everyone is in his ship. Likewise, when we go through storms because we did something, it, just not, it does not just affect us, but those who are in our ships too. It may be our relationships, it may be our friendships, it may be our home, our workplace, our church, anywhere or anything that we were at, we are at. But even when we lose valuable cargo, maybe it's financial stuff or our peace or anything, even when we lose these valuable cargo, and when we, even when we see the people around us suffering and uh, trying to do whatever they can to save themselves, even then if we turn a blind eye to the storm, things would only get worse. Let's go to verse 11 through 14. And since the storm was getting worse all the time, they asked him, Jonah, what should we do to stop this storm? Jonah said, Throw me into the sea, and it will become calm again. I know this terrible storm is all my fault. Instead, the sailors rowed even harder to get the ship to land. But the stormy sea was too violent for them, and they could not make it. And, Jonah, and they cried out to the Lord, Jonah's God. O oh Lord, they pleaded, don't make us die for this man's sin. Don't hold us as accountable for his death. O oh Lord, you have sent this storm upon him for your own good reasons. See, for so long, I have read this chapter and I went through these sections and I thought how Jonah was concerned about the other sailor's safety. You know, I admired him for this sacrificial mind that he, would, he was willing to be thrown overboard so that the others would be saved. But uh, when I read it more closely later, I understood what Jonah was actually saying. He was not worried about the others. He was actually saying, hey you guys, throw me overboard because I would rather drown and die than do what God asked me to do. He actually cared more about his image and reputation than his own life. He did not want to obey God. He would rather die than do what God asked him to do. We can see the evidence of this in chapter 4, verse 3. We have read it before. I'll just read it again. Just kill me now, Lord. I'd rather be dead than alive if what I predicted will not happen. See, Jonah must have lived as a prophet who always got things right. And he did not want to be, become a prophet that got one thing wrong. He, he thought dying was better than getting things wrong. And later, we see Jonah drowning in the seas. And even when he was drowning, we can't see him calling out to the Lord or repenting. So we may judge Jonah for being stubborn. And we see how things happen to him and he, him being still stubborn. But sometimes these stories portray our own life. Even when we are losing everything, even when we, are feel like, even when we feel like dying, we would we'd still be like, no, I won't do anything that would affect my name, my reputation, my own or own, my goals. We might have heard old people say like, see, I have, been, I have been born into a certain religion or certain group and have lived in that religion or group for 70 to 80 years and I would die being a part of this religion. I would not change no matter what. We have seen stubborn people like that in our lives. Or we have, we have seen other people who have been in positions of power and influence. They'll be like, I've been in this field, I've been doing this for 20, 30 years. I can't leave all that. 
I can't leave all that and be seen serving in a church or servicing people. I'll be mocked. I'll be laughed by my peers and friends. I would not let that happen. I would rather die than this happen to me. See, these are all more relatable versions of the same stubbornness that Jonah was having. But all these storms, all these storms shows us how much God actually loves us. See, he's a God who leaves the 99 and goes in search of the one. And even when we are not faithful, God is faithful. So he sent a fish to swallow Jonah. And inside the fish, things got tough. See, inside the fish, there is no escape. There is no living and there is no dying. Jonah wanted to die and he could not die. Jonah, if Jonah wanted to escape, he could not escape. And in this situation where he was between life and death, where he could not do anything, it is in that awful place that Jonah finally decided to repent and pray to God. We can see that in chapter 2, Jonah's prayer. I'm not going to get into that. We'll, we all know. You can check it out when you go home. But it is at that point that Jonah decided to obey God. And when he made the decision, God made sure that Jonah is safely back on land. You know, this story should be a lesson for all of us. When we walk against the will of God, storms are a natural response that comes from the love of God for us. And it is very important that we learn how to respond in these situations. See, Jonah did not have to go through all this. No, he knew he was against the will of God. He was going against the will of God. As soon as he saw storm clouds, he could have prayed and repented. And if he had done that, then he would not have gone through. He and his sailors, the sailors among, uh, with him, they would not have to go through the stormy situations. But if he, if he had prayed when the storms got worse, then he and his sailors would not have lost all that valuable cargo. If he had prayed when he was drowning, he would not have been in a situation where he goes into a fish. Similarly, we don't have to wait until things get worse. When we see a storm, we should start repentance then and there. We should return to God then and there. At the first sight of the storm, we should repent and return to God. But we are people. We make mistakes. We make dumb mistakes. And if any one of you here is in the midst of a storm, no matter what phase you are in, even if you are in a phase where you are no, doing nothing, acting as if this would pass, acting as if you don't care, even if you are in a place where the people around you and you yourself are losing valuable things, valuable cargo, even if you are in a place where you are drowning, and even if you are in a place like in that fish, a place where you are between life and death, if you make that commitment to repent, if you take the decision to pray, you can be sure that God will deliver you out and pull you out from out of the fish and place you in a place where you can do God's will. This is the lesson we should take from the story of Jonah. Now let us move on to the second type of storm. You know, this type of storm comes when we are in the will of God. And one of the best examples we find in the Bible is in Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. This is the passage where Jesus walks on water. This is very familiar. So I'm not going to read the entire passage. I'm only going to pick a few key verses. So let's look at verse 22. Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross over to the other side while he sent the people home. See here, Jesus insisted, Jesus commanded the, uh, his disciples to go over to the other side. 
and the disciples obeyed instantly. But look what happened. Let's look at uh, verse 24. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble, far away from land, for a strong wind has risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. See, all these disciples were in the will of God. They were doing what Jesus asked him to do. But yet, they faced a storm, a powerful storm that challenged them, that told them that their ship would sink. But God had plans. We see Jesus coming to them, walking on water. Now let us focus on Peter here. Let's look at verse 27 through 29. Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, I am here. And then Peter called out to him. If it's really you, tell me to come to you, walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. Now, let us try to picture the scene. Okay, Peter walking on water. Let's uh, create a mental picture. We would see that everything would be working against Peter. All the forces of nature would be trying to pull him down. Take gravity, for example. It would be trying to pull Peter down in the, into the depths of the sea. The heavy winds would be trying to knock Peter down. The waves would be trying to overwhelm him. And the buoyant force would not be enough to hold him up. Moreover, his friends, the other 11 disciples, they would not be there cheering Peter on. They would be like, Peter, don't jump. Are you crazy? You're not Jesus. You can't walk on water. They would be trying hard to not let him go. Yeah, and even if Peter jumps, they would be trying to pull uh, Peter back. And these disciples, they aren't ordinary men. They were the 12 apostles. Like, they have, done, they have seen Jesus do miracles. And they have done miracles themselves using Jesus' name. In Matthew chapter 12, we can see Jesus sends out these 12 disciples in pairs of two to heal the sick, to raise the dead. So these were not ordinary men. These people, they have, they have had God's power work through them. But they were all scared. And these people's intention, intentions were not bad. They did not have ill intentions. They genuinely loved Peter. And they genuinely cared for his safety. And all they were trying to do was to protect him. But still, against all odds, Peter managed to walk on water. What is it that held him up against all this? I would say it is the word, yes, come. The word that came out of the mouth of Jesus. See, this word that came from mouth, the mouth of Jesus is a firm foundation that Peter used to walk over these waters. See, I would imagine this situation like there's a platform that Peter is walking on. And this platform is nothing but that word, C-O-M-E, come. And he'll be walking on that platform towards Jesus. And likewise, sometimes when we step out in faith, in obedience to God's word, we also might face sim uh, similar storms. And all we might have is God's word. Everything and everything would be working against us. People around us, no matter how strong they are in faith, they, they do not hear the voice of God. They might not, they might not believe in us. They might, not, they might think we are crazy. These people that we care about, these people that care about us, they would not be able to understand. We might be alone. But all we have is that word from God. His promises and this promises would be a firm foundation for us and to walk on the waters and we should when we face these kind of storms what we should do is hold on to these promises and look forward onto Jesus's faith 
and move forward in faith. And that is how we overcome these type of storms. But again, we are all human. When these storms come, when these waves try to drown us, we'll get scared. Well, uh, let's look at what happened to Peter. Peter got scared. But the moment he started drowning, he called out to Jesus. And Jesus was there. He gave his hand and lifted Peter out from the waters and made him walk on the waters again. See, Jesus knew when Peter would doubt. Jesus knew when Peter would drown. And Jesus made sure that he was there at the right place, at the right time to lift him up. When we go into deep waters, trusting in God's word, God would definitely make sure that he is there with us to lift us up when we drown, to give us that strong foundation to walk upon. And even when we doubt and even when we fall, God will, you know, he would hold us. And together, Peter and Jesus walked back into the boat. And when Jesus got back into the boat, all these 11 disciples would have had a decent testimony. They got to know that Jesus can calm storms. They got to know that Jesus can walk on waters. But Peter had a different story. Peter had a life-changing testimony. He knew for real. He had a first-hand experience he, he walked on water. It's not Jesus that walked on water. He had a first-hand experience about how God can use him to walk upon stormy seas. And this life-changing testimony must have been what made Peter one of the strongest and powerful apostles. We know how uh, Peter was used later by God in Acts and all. And this powerful testimony of Peter did not impact just his life. But even 2,000 years later, when we hear of Peter's story, this same testimony is helping us. This leap of faith that Peter took is helping us. Likewise, these storms, when we come across these storms, this is the reason why, Pete, uh, why God allows these storms. It brings glory to God. And it builds our faith. And it equips us for our calling. And this testimony would help us. And it, it would help others as well. Now, let's look at the third type of storm. You'll find this story in Acts chapter 27 and 28. It's a bit too long to read. So I'll give a small summary and pick a few key verses. So this happens when Paul is arrested, jailed for proclaiming the gospel of Jesus. And then he asked to be sent to Rome to have a trial with Caesar. So in chapter 27, Peter is being sent to Rome. He's sailing to Rome. And while he was about to go to Rome, Peter warns his officers about troubles along the way, about potential storms that are coming across their way. Let's look at Acts chapter 27, verses 9 to 11. This is Peter talking to the officials. Verse 9. We had lost a lot of time, and the weather was becoming dangerous for sea travel, because it was so late in the fall. And Paul spoke to the ship's officers about it. Men, he said, I believe there is trouble ahead us if we go on. Shipwreck, loss of cargo, danger to our lives as well. But the officer in charge of the prisoners listened more to the ship's captain and the owner than Paul. See here, Paul is a man of God. He knew God's will. He understands God's will and he's trying to do everything he has, he can to do God's will. And he goes ahead 
and warns the people who are decision makers. He talks to them, but his words were not respected. They did not care about his words and they went for her. And let's see what happened. Let's go on to Acts chapter 27, verses 13 to 15 and 18 to 20. We'll skip a verses, some verses in between. Verse 13. When a light wind began blowing from the south, the sailors thought they could make it. So they pulled up the anchor and sailed close to the shore of Crete. But the weather changed abruptly. And a wind of typhoon strength called the Northeaster burst out across the island and blew us out into the sea. The sailors could not turn the ship into the wind, so they gave up and let it run before the gale. Let's move on to verse 18. The next day, as the gale force wind continued to batter the ship, the crew began throwing the cargo overboard. The following day, they even took some of the ship's gear and threw it overboard. But the terrible storm raged for many days, blotting out the sun and the stars, until at last all hope was lost. Here we see that what Paul predicted actually happened. Here we see a man of God. He understood the will of God and he tries, you know, trying, he tried making uh, the people understand, the, pe the decision makers understand. But they did not listen. And because of their disobedience and because of their stupid mistakes, all of them, including Paul, was dragged into the storm. Sometimes in our lives, we, not, we may not be the decision makers. We, not, we may not be the one charged in charge of decisions. And other people would make decisions that would potentially affect us and their lives. Maybe uh, it was in our home where our parents take our decisions or our spouse take our decisions. Maybe it's in our workplace where our bosses take our workplace, our decisions. Wherever it is, there will be times in our lives where we may not be in charge of the decisions. And even when we are trying to live by the will of God, even when we are trying our best to do what God asks us to do, because of no fault of ours, us, because of decisions others took, we may experience storms that try to drown us. We may, be, we may experience storms similar to ones that Paul experienced. Now let's look at what happened later. Let's go to verses 11, no, 21 to 26. Verse 21. For no one had eaten for a long time. Finally, Paul called the crew together and said, Men, you should have listened to me in the first place and not left Crete. You could have avoided all this damage and loss. But take courage. None of you would lose your lives, even though the ship would go down. For last night, an angel of the Lord, to whom I belong, and whom I serve, stood beside me and said, Don't be afraid, Paul, for you will surely stand trial before Caesar. What's more, God in his goodness has granted safety to everyone sailing with you. So take courage, for I believe God will be just, for I, I believe God, it will be just as he said, and we will be shipped shipwrecked on an island. See here, Paul had a promise from God. You know, God had told Paul that he would stand trial before Caesar. And Paul did everything he can, everything he knew to make sure he is in God's will. But all his crew made stupid mistakes. But even in the midst of that storm, even when they were throwing cargo, even when they were fearing for their lives, it is Paul that comes to the rescue. You know, God showed Paul what would happen. 
God told Paul that in his goodness, for the sake of Paul, he would save not only Paul, but everyone in the ship. And it actually happened, like Paul said, none of them lost their lives and all of them were saved for the sake of Paul. This should encourage us. Sometimes in life, people may not listen to us. We, not, we may not be allowed to make certain decisions and we'd fall into a huge mess because of what someone else did. But if we are trying to do our best to stick to God's will, if we try to do what God asks us to do, we can be sure that God would rescue us and he would not rescue just us, but he would rescue everyone who is with us, everyone who is sailing with us. And this is God's goodness. And when God does that, these people who actually rejected your words, who actually thought that your words did not have value or meaning, they would understand that you serve a powerful God. They would understand your words would have value. They would know that you are protected by God no matter what. This is the purpose of this third type of storm. It is to lift you up before the people that actually rejected you. It is to show them, it is to show others that this God you serve is the real God. The God you serve is the only God. This is the purpose of this storm. And it lifts you up. You earn their respect. And they will be like, I want your God now. I want to serve the God that you are serving. Because he is this God who serves, who saves us from storms. And they would take your, they would start taking your words seriously. So we have covered three types of storms. Let's summarize. What should we do when we come into storms? What should we do when storms come, come into our lives? The first thing that we should do is to check our spiritual life to check our spiritual relationship with God we must check whether we are in the will of God obeying the word of God how do we discern the will of God how do we discern what God has for us we understand his will by consistently reading the word of God and consistently meditating upon the word of God if we do that we'll understand God's will and if we have a consistent prayer life, if we consistently spend quality time with God, we would also have knowledge about His calling, His plans and purposes for us. And only when we know the will of God and His calls and purposes for us can we make sure that we are in line with God. Only when we, are in, uh, when we know whether or not we are in line with God would we know what kind of storms we are facing. See, if you are you know, traveling or walking against the will of God and then if you try to step out into the water hoping to walk upon the waters like Peter did, you won't, you won't walk, into, uh, walk upon the waters. You will be drowning like Jonah. But if you are in the will of God and if you come into a, a position, to a place where you have to walk on water, if you step out, you can be sure that the firm foundation of God's word would lift you up and prevent you from drowning. So, if you are going in the will of God, you can be sure that God will hold you up. But if you are going against the will of God, take a moment, look at the storm and think, what should I do? Should I suffer and then repent or should I repent here and now? If you are walking against the will of God, and you see storms, repent. Run back to God. Don't make the stupid mistakes Jonah did. Run back to God. 
and if you are always doing the will of god if you're standing up for god but people are not allowing you to make certain decisions you can be sure that even then god would rescue you all you got to do is stand firm keep telling see paul did not stop at once he did not stop trying to convince the others he kept on talking to them he kept on giving them good advice likewise when we are in the storm because of other people's decisions we keep doing what god asked us to do we keep telling them good advice we keep trying to do god's will and sooner or later god will rescue us and god will rescue them i'll wind up with a verse esaia chapter 43 verses 2 and 3 when you go through deep waters i'll be with you when you go through rivers of difficulty you will not drown when you walk through the fire of oppression you will not be burned up the flames would not consume you for i am the lord your god the holy one of israel your savior let's bow our down, bow our heads down for prayer heavenly father we thank you for this verse we thank you for your word lord we hope kartave that you spoke to each and every single heart kartave in this audience and those who have been hearing us through other media like online or youtube lord i pray that you touch every single heart that this word reaches lord and i pray that they understand the will of god and they do what's needed to make sure that they are in god's will so that when they see storms or that we let them know what they should do let them do the needful and return to you so that when the storm comes help them tackle them help them come out of it stronger more powerful and more in faith so we commit everything into your hands oh lord in jesus mighty name we pray amen